श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम समत्व योग उच्चते इज द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल व्हिच इज बीइंग एक्सपाउंडेड इन एंड थ्रू एज द मींस एंड एज द गोल therefore when we are now dealing with the science of meditation here also the teacher has brought us to a point that aaradhi niyama uchchate what are the rules concerning the daily conduct in our life so that we are able to practice meditation successfully so in the 16th verse we were told he who is an extremist natyash natastu yogosti na chai kanta manashnatah na chati swapna shilasya jagrato naiva charjuna he either is eating too much or not eating at all either he is sleeping too much or he is not sleeping at all such extremist cannot attain yoga after having said this now in the 17th verse then what should be <coughs> the approach to life by the seeker of truth this is said in the 17th verse yukta har viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu युक्त स्वनाबोधस्य योगो भवति दुख योग दुख योग बिकम्स द मीन्स फॉर अटेनमेंट ऑफ द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ मिजरीज योग दुख दुख हा इट इज नॉट विसर्ग दुख हा हा मीन्स हा मीन्स डिस्ट्रक्शन हा नी आर इन अदर वर्ड्स द डेफिनेशन ऑफ योग इज योग दुख हा योग इज द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ मिजरीज फॉर होम युक्ताहार विहार से आह्रीयते आहार अत्र विहरण विहारा पादक्रम तो युक्त नियत परिमाण यथा युक्त चेष्ट से युक्ता नियता चेष्टा यी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल युक्ताहार विहार से आह्रीयते आहार दैट विच इज ईटन इज कॉल एज आहार एंड इट इज कॉल एज अन्नम न हियर आहार मीन्स इन टेक ऑफ फूड इज वन डायरेक्ट मीनिंग but it also means that we eat the five sub objects through our five senses shabda sparsha roopa rasagandha so yukta ahar if we are wanting to practice what is meant is don't indulge too much in this world either reading or listening or talking or walking otherwise what happens we get involved too much in one thing and the whole balance of life is lost because yukta we have to have the proper equanimity so yukta ahar viharase vihara is walking padakramo so tau yukto niyama niyata parimana yasya so he who is having a perfect balance between the involvement and the withdrawal <coughs> remember in the fifth chapter what bhagwan told uh, <coughs> the performance of the karma and withdrawal from the karma 
तो बोथ आर इक्वली रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द अटेनमेंट ऑफ द परफेक्शन सो अर्जुन क्वेश्चन वॉज समाइम यू आर प्रेजिंग द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कर्म ड्यूटी समटाइम्स यू आर टेलिंग नो योग मातिष्ठोतिष्ठ भारत एंड देर फॉर काइंडली टेल एस फॉर वन थिंग वॉट एक्जैक्टली शुड बी डन बाय अस इन रिप्लाय टू दैट भगवान टोल्ड संन्यास कर्म योग निश्रेय सकराबू तयोस्तु कर्म संन्यासा कर्म योग विशिष्य मीनिंग वॉट बोथ आर इक्वल इम्पॉर्टंट कर्म योग एज वेल एज कर्म संन्यास This is what is meant here by yukta har viharas. It is necessary that our life is a perfect balance. Second thing, yukta chestasya. So yukta chestasya, yukta niyata chesta asya. Similarly, chesta means uh, activities. He is whose activities are such. That he is neither lazy nor workaholic. Both the extremes are avoided. Either we are so lazy, just don't want to do anything, or other extreme, we are so workaholic that we just can't keep quiet. See, yukta cheshtasya karma su. Then yukta swapnava bodhasya. The third thing, swapna avabodha. तौ युक्त सो नियत काल सो ही हू इज एबल टू स्लीप वेन रिक्वायर्ड टू स्लीप ही हू इज एबल टू वेकअप वेन रिक्वायर्ड टू वेकअप सो दिस एबिलिटी टू गेट इन टू स्लीप और नॉट टू स्लीप द एबिलिटी टू मेंटेन ए परफेक्ट बैलेंस ऑफ स्लीपिंग एंड वेकिंग इज एब्सुलूटली नेसेसरी सो तस्य युक्ता हार विहार से युक्त चेष्ट से कर्मसु युक्त स्वप्नावबोध से योगिन फॉर सच ए योगी योग दुख दुखा सर्वाणी हंती दुख दिस योग बिकम्स द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ ऑल द मिजरीज सर्व संसार दुख क्षय कृत योगो देर फॉर वॉट इज योग योग इज The means or yoga is the destruction of all the miseries born out of relative existence. So this is what is the understanding about what yoga means now. See, this is the sixth stage. There are seven stages, and the sixth one is the. दुख हानि एंड सेवन थिंग इज निरंकुशा तृप्ति तो दिस दुख हानि डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द इग्नरेंस दिस इज व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज योग योगो भवती दुख हा नाउ सी इफ वी आर प्रैक्टिसिंग मेडिटेशन एंड इफ वी हैव कंप्लेन्स लाइक दिस यू नो I have got tremendous headache since I started meditation. So yoga bhoti dukha da, not dukha ha. Or else we start our meditation, and since then our legs have become terribly painful. So we are going wrong somewhere. So we must initially understand how much is our capacity, and within that capacity, start doing it. so don't sit for 10 20 hours in a row and don't go to the other extreme i will not sit no every day have a very regular life regularized life i have seen one boy i was told about him by his guru so i mean this boy he is he was american and uh, studying with some mahatma and uh, <clears throat> about him i was told The Swami did this fellow. Once I told him to sit for meditation, and then I have guided him, and I did also sankalpa for him. Eight hours you are going to sit, and he sat sat for eight hours totally nirvikalpa samadhi. Very comfortable, but he is so restless otherwise. 
Now see, he has got two qualities, but they are in extreme. He is able to sit continuously, or he is extremely disturbed. So here, what Bhagwan is telling, we have to have a perfect balance, because extremism anybody can do. If good food is there, you can keep on eating. If you don't want to eat, you can keep away. You know, this happened once in U.S. Once I was somewhere and taking food, so I said I'll take only my required quantity, and I took little bit and finished. So one man asked me, he said, "Swami, how are you able to control that you take measured quantity every time? You don't take more." When we get food like this, we so just go ahead. See what happens later. I said, you know, I'll tell you the truth. Yes, I said you get good food once in a fortnight, once in a month. I get good food three times a day, and therefore it is not a novelty for me. When somebody is starving, he you know starts you know uh, like a hungry man jumping on the food. Because there they go get the food fresh from the fridge, and therefore one gets tired of that food. Naturally, you can't eat that food. But once they get a good food, and then they say, "Now let us take the revenge." That is not the right way. Yukta har viharasse yukta chestasse karmasu yukta swapna avodasya yogo hoti dukkha. So, first sign. Whether we are walking the path of meditation properly or not, yoga bhavati dukkha. Are we cheerful or not? If we are cranky, frustrated, angry, dejected, blaming, feeling that I am a doormat, nobody ever understands me, then we are not yogi. We are rogi. First principle. Now second. Atha aduna kada yukto bhavati idhi uchchate. Now here the teacher tells when the seeker becomes established in meditation. This is said. Now this eighteenth uh, verse describes the final state. Nineteen gives us the simile for that, and then twentieth verse onward. Next four five. Four verses. The teacher tells the whole picture of a man who is steadfast in yoga. This is how the scheme of thought is. Yada viniyatam chittam, atmane vavatishthate, nispruha sarva kame bhyo. इत्युच्चते यदा विनीतम चित्तम विशेषेण नियतम संयतम एकाग्रताम आपन्नम चित्तम विनीतम चित्तम वेन द माइंड इज विशेषेण नियतम इट इज स्पेशली कंट्रोल्ड मीन्स वॉट एकाग्रताम आपन्नम When the mind is available for the given job for a required length of time without any hesitation or efforts, this is called viniyatam chitta. Hitva bhaya chinta and is no more extrovert. So a controlled mind is available. Therefore, it is not a sleeping mind. And because it is not sleeping, maybe it will be extrovert. No, it is not extrovert. So hitva bhaya chintam atmani eva kevale avatishthate swatmani sthitim labhate ittertha. Now this vinayatam chittam atmani eva avatishthate. Now the mind is focused to the self and remains absorbed in the self. Now here, please understand the meaning. We have seen this thing, fortunately, in our Sadhachar. Don't forget that verse from Sadhachar. That is the very crux of the whole spiritual understanding. Chittam chitta vijaniyat takara rahitam yada takaro vishayat dhyasaha 
जपा रागव यथा मणव चित्त इज एसेंशियली एंड बेसिकली चित्त मीनिंग माइंड इज नथिंग बट कॉन्शियसनेस वेन तकार रहितम यदा सो वेन फ्रॉम द चित्त यू रिमूव द त कंप्लीटली वॉट रिमेन्स चित्त चित्त माइनस त इज चित्त एंड वॉट इज द तकार इज इट ओनली सो सिंपल राइट द चित्त एंड माइनस त इज इक्वल टू चित्त कॉन्शियसनेस रियलाइजेशन इज इट दैट नो देन वॉट इज द त तकारो विषयाध्यास तकार इज विषय अध्यास विषय अध्यास मीन्स वॉन्ट विषय मीन्स ऑब्जेक्टिव परसेप्शन और ऑब्जेक्टिविटी इन नॉलेज इज कॉल्ड एज तकार सो वेन एवर नॉलेज हैज ऑब्जेक्टिव कॉम्पोनंट देन इट इज द माइंड विट इज फंक्शनिंग सी एज आई सी दिस पेपर वेट क्रिस्टल पेपर वेट एंड एज आई नो माई सेल्फ so in this experience the paper weight is recognized as not i and my presence is recognized as i so these two knowledges what is the difference in case of the paper weight knowledge there is takara vishaya adhyasa a sense of otherness in case of the experience of my own being there is no sense of otherness so takaro vishaya dhyasah now the question comes how the objectivity is created meaning objectivity is not there and yet it is created be very attentive so the teacher gives examples japa ragav yatha manav now see this crystal thing you all see is transparent now when you see this in the background of a blue cover it appears as if this is also blue see so what has happened the color of this blue cover is super imposed on this particular crystal uh, paper weight no why because it doesn't have its own color had it been red green yellow then the other color would not have influenced it because it doesn't have any color it can take here blue or you can have the color of my skin in this manner there will be superimposition of other colors on the transparent object if this example is clear now come i is recognized as is existing i is recognized as conscious existence so what is our experience our experience is conscious existence now second thing how this paper weight is recognized as existence but not conscious existence so what has happened the consciousness is the same there are not two types of consciousnesses is the same but the consciousness is recognized as the self and the absence of consciousness is recognized as the not self but consciousness cannot be absent is ever present so how this has come so that which is not but which appears is called as an illusion like the sunrise the sunset it is not sun never rises sun never sets so sunrise and sunset are illusions in the same manner here चित्त आत्मनि एव अवतिष्ठते मीन्स वॉट 
बाह्य चिंता हित्वा मीनिंग व्हेन द थिंकिंग अबाउट एनीथिंग अदर देन द सेल्फ इज टोटली सस्पेंडेड द माइंड एज इफ रिटर्न्स बैक टू द स्टेटस ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस बिफोर मैरिज आई वॉज अन मैरिज then i got married and then again i got divorce so i had to fill in the form so what do i write married or unmarried so i write unmarried or i write single means what earlier i was single then i became double and again the moment the conditioning is discarded then again i come back to the original status of single in the same manner original pure consciousness in that consciousness objectivity is introduced because of the introduction of the objectivity in the consciousness the chit has become chitta the consciousness has become mind and when from the mind objectivity is discarded what will happen again the mind will revert back to consciousness this is what is all the spiritual practice yada viniyatam chittam atmanne va avatishthate but how and when can this happen this is said in the next uh, uh, part of the verse निस्पृहा सर्वकामेभ्य निर्गता दृष्टा दृष्ट विषेभ्य स्पृहा तृष्णा ये योगिन सा ही हू हेज नौ नो मोर लॉन्गिंग फॉर एनीथिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड बिकॉज वॉट इज चित्त कॉन्शियसनेस प्लस ऑब्जेक्टिव वर्ल्ड पुट टुगेदर इज कॉल्ड अ चित्त Nispruhaha sarva kame bhya. When we have no desire of any kind, so desireless mind is consciousness. Therefore, sarva kame bhya. Now, which are the desires? How can we remove all the desires? We even don't know how many are there. So, I'll tell you in short what are the number of desires we can understand. there are only two desires one desire is to live the other desire is to leave no third desire desire to live because there is a fear of death desire to leave because there is fear in living meaning we are still living at the level of the upadis the conditionings and therefore the fear comes and that fear is called as the desire one understanding second understanding nispruhaha sarva kame bya freedom from all desires is yoga kshemam tyaktva what we don't have we should have it one kind of desire like you know i don't have your golden chain so i can have desire for your golden chain so i don't have that is called as the desire of yoga kind yoga now kshema i have got my cell phone so my desire is not of the cell phone but for the cell phone that this should not be stolen by anybody see so the desires can be classified into these two categories what i don't have i should have and what i have should remain protected yoga kshema so nispruhaha sarva kamebhya he who has given up all the longings with reference to the relative world yukta ittichate tada then he is called as a yogi now tell me this condition of the yoga 
he is called as yogi and this is called as yoga what our patanjali maharshi told yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha ha so as long as the chitta is uh, not allowed to erupt the thoughts it is called as yoga how long will you sit like this 10 20 years after that the basic cause not recognizing one's correct identity is still maintained and the result will be we again get lost into the same relativity the existence as the samsari therefore please understand this basic difference in yoga and or vedanta shastra we take the help of yoga because it is a very good extremely well defined approach for the control over matter but that is not all after that we have to recognize our correct identity so nispruha sarvakamebhya yukta ittyachate tada so drishta drishta visheebhya spruha trishna yasya nirgata yoginah sah so drishta drishta visheebhya drishta visay is in this worldly things adrishta is in the other worldly things so he has no desires of this world or the other world and युक्तः समाहितः ही इज कॉल्ड युक्त समाहित और ही इज एस्टैब्लिश इन समाधि नाउ वी अटेंड टू ही इज एस्टैब्लिश इन समाधि मींस व्हाट ही इज नॉट सिटिंग इन वन प्लेस ही इज वेरी मच मूविंग इन द वर्ल्ड बट ही इज नो मोर टॉर्मेंटेड बाय एनी ऑफ द वर्ल्डली थिंग्स otherwise if this is to be attained that this bhaha sarva kami bhaha then you don't have to struggle or on there go to sleep see in sleep we don't have desires in sleep we are not worried about this world or the other world in the sleep there is no sense of otherness therefore there is no objectivity so sleep is not the meditation therefore this clear understanding that the element of objectivity in knowledge is bondage freedom from the element of objectivity from the knowledge is the samadhi so he is in samadhi tita pradnyasya ka bhasha samadhi sthasya keshava स्थित ही किम प्रभाषेत किसीत व्रजेत किम वॉट वॉज सेट इन रिप्लाय टू दिस क्वेश्चन बाय भगवान प्रजहाती यदा कामान सर्वान पार्थ मनोगता हियर ऑल्सो निस्पृह सर्व कामेभ्य सी द सेम थॉट प्रजहाती यदा कामान हाउ सर्वान पार्थ मनोगता हियर सर्व कामेभ्य all the desires are renounced he is called as yogi he is in meditation so samahitah iti uchyate tada tasmin kale that time onwards now tasya yogirah yoginah samahitam yat chittam tasya upama uchyate now this quality of the mind of this yogi is compared comparison gives us understanding through the mind mind cannot function without comparison and therefore in the absolute reality ekameva dvitiya there is nothing to compare mind disappears in deep sleep there is experience of total absence absence cannot be compared with anything see and therefore there is no comparison there is no mind therefore one of the method of meditation is 
never compare anybody with anybody any place with any place any experience with any experience you are in the present but our mind has to survive so what it will do it will bring the past suppose you are having uh, nice food so enjoy but that time we remember i remember you know when we were in village and our you know uh, dadi ma used to prepare and that time so the present wonderful food is forgotten then you have gone to that forbidden village where god knows where anything happened or not see this is how the mind survives remember i told you the last instruction given by bhagwan krishna to uddhav ji is this never praise never condemn never comment never appreciate never depreciate never compare anything anybody anywhere never receive with great oh ya kam ha ho ha ho and then we are going oh ya go i am so sorry no keep yourself in equanimity so here example is given for us to understand through mind but this understanding is only at the level of the mind the right understanding will be when we are established in this yoga no more desires no more miseries because desire is an abnormality on the mind okay and whenever we are associated with the abnormality is it is painful even our ear is normal we don't even remember whether there is ear or not and if there is some mosquito who landed and perform operation there and now there is so tremendous pain there so we are again and again reminded of because it is abnormal therefore nispraha sarva kame bya means what this is now explained through an example yatha deepo nivatastho ningate sopama smruta ningate sopama smruta yogino yata chittasya जतो योग आत्मन यथा दीप प्रदीप निवातस्थ निवाते वातवर्जिते देशे स्थित वेन अ लैम लैम्प इज नॉट इलेक्ट्रिक बल लैम्प इज अ बल विथ फ्लेम सो वेन अ लैम्प दीप निवातस्थ place in a place where there is no breeze vata varjite deshe sthitah so it is kept in a corner where the breeze or any fan nothing is disturbing what will happen that time na ingate na chalate that time the flame remains absolutely steady सा उपमा उपमीयते अनया इति उपमा योग ने चित्त प्रचार दर्शि सो दिस काइंड ऑफ अनडिस्टर्ब अनफ्लिकरिंग फ्लेम अवेलेबल इन अ वेल प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया फ्रॉम द एयर दिस इज कंपेर्ड विथ द माइंड ऑफ द योगी सो चित्त प्रचार दर्शि दो आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द योग एटसेट्रा नाउ स्मृता चिंतिता योगिन यत चित्त संयत अंत सो ए पर्सन हूज माइंड और चित्त इज टोटली कंट्रोल्ड इज कंपेर्ड विथ द काइंड ऑफ लैम प्रोटेक्टेड एंड केप देयर व्हाट हैपन्स द फ्लेम डज नॉट फ्लिकर मूव एट ऑल युंजतो योगम अनुतिष्ठता आत्मन सामधि अनुतिष्ठता सो ही हू इज प्रैक्टिसिंग योगाभ्यास हाउ इज इज माइंड 
or chitta, it is like the flame which is not disturbed because it is well protected. Now this is the example, simile. Now instead of doing so much of what you say, like a bulb, let there be even wind, nothing will happen. Now this is the beauty of this uh, Bhagavad Gita. See, the potentiality of flickering is 100% alive. See? Consciousness is ready to be mined any moment. See? And yet it is remaining as consciousness. In case of the lamb, so much of protection is required, protection from the wind. In case of the yogi, what is the wind which he has protected from? Tadapinna munchati asha pindam. He has no desires, no hopes, no expectations and therefore his mind is ever steady. Yogi no yata chittasya. And such a steady, alert, undisturbed mind is nothing but consciousness. And this has to be only recognized. It can't be told this is that. No. You just go through that experience. When the eyes are open, things are seen, but a seer is not born. When the ears are open, the sounds are heard, but the hearer is not born. The karma actions are done, but no actor is born. The knowledge is there, but no knower is born. This thought free experience is called as the consciousness. The thoughts begin from aham vritti, vritti vyapti. This is a book, I know this is a book. In having the knowledge this is a book, there is only vritti vyapti, there is no phala vyapti. A knower is not born. In case of the consciousness, which is of the nature of knowledge, therefore there will be knowledge. But in that consciousness, there being absence of the thought, there cannot be, I know the consciousness possibility. Vritti vyapyatva me vastu phala vyapti katham bhavet. See? Are you reading or not this uh, Sadachar now and then? Read every day. Like we read our these days our Kailya Upanishad. Keep on reading. You won't know which day, which thought will sink deep in your understanding. And then how we will start joy. Every moment. So, Yoginaha yada chittasya yunjataha yoga matmanaha. Now this is the simile given. Now from here onward, how this mind, which is now totally withdrawn, undisturbed, what is that, how is that, and what is the experience of the whole thing ultimately together called as yoga? This is said from verse number 20, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So these four verses becomes one thought. Yatro paramate chittam Niruddham yoga sevayam Yatra chaivatmanatmanam 
पश्यन्नात्मनि तुष्यति सुखमात्यंतिकम् यत्तद बुद्धि ग्राह्यमतीन्द्रियम् वेत्ति यत्र न चैवायम् स्थितश्चलति तत्वतः यमलब्धवाचा परम लाभम् मन्यते नाधिकम् ततः यस्मिन् स्थितो न दुःखेन गुरुना पि विचाल्यते तम् विद्या दुःख संयोग योगम् योग संज्ञितम् सनिष्चये न योगतव्यो योगो निर्विन्न चेतसाम इन द सेवेंटीन वर्स व्हाट वाज़ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ़ योगा गिवन योगो भवति दुखहा when you are refusing to be miserable, you are a yogi. And when you become miserable by default, then you are a rogi. This is the definition given in 17th verse. Now the same definition is again restated and re-established in the 23rd verse. Tam vidya dukkha sanyoga viyogam yoga sanyitam. When we refuse to be identified with the miseries and therefore in the presence of the misery we do not become miserable, then we have attained yoga. See? Bhagwan will make you miserable. Refuse to be miserable. But you will see those people who are miserable, what they are doing, they have, first of all, a constant demand of sympathy from the world. And then, to gain the sympathy, they fall victim. See? Don't have that attitude. Discover your inner strength. And those who are having that sympathy wave, it will never last long. Be very clear about it. So if the miseries come, stand apart. How can the misery <coughs> trouble us? So here the teacher begins, now 28th verse. Yatra yasmin kale uparamate यत्रो परमते यस्पिन काले उपरमते चित्तम् उपरतिम गच्छति निरुद्धम् सर्वतः निवारित प्रचारम् योगसेवया योगा अनुष्ठाने न यत्र च एव एव यस्पिन च काले आत्मना समाधि परिशुद्धे न अंतत करने न आत्मा परम चैतन्य ज्योतिष्वरूपम् पश्चन् उपलब्धमानः स्वे एव आत्मनि तुष्टि तुष्टिम भजते now see what it is. That moment when our chitta has dropped the total objectivity from its content. Now take this example. I am miserable because of my husband and my in-laws. So I am a miserable wife. Now what I do? I seek divorce. Now divorce separates the husband and the in-laws. Now what has happened? I have come back to the status of a womanhood. So the conditioning was only a mental conditioning. The husband is not killed. 
the in-laws have not died but our mental association that is cut see and as a result all problems gone if this is understood so it is something like you know out of the man the husband has come out or out of the woman the wife has come out now what is the wife conditioned expression of a woman is wife and what is the conditioning conditioning is husband or the wife and who is husband and wife other than the self so yatra uparamate chittam when the chittam yasmin kale uparamate chittam uparatim gachati the moment the chitta is withdrawn meaning the moment objectivity is totally drop meaning there are no more thought oscillations turmoiling in the mind meaning there is no struggle effortless being yatro paramate chittam now be very attentive we push our clothes in a suitcase when we go any size of suitcase you take it is always small any size then what we do we somehow push the things who has to sit on the suitcase we have to close it and somebody comes to sit and everything has come inside but how all kichir kichir kich everything is crumbled and we feel we have attended done a good job and when you open all those wrinkles again they are still maintained there in the same manner when the chitta without removing the disease of objectivity when that chitta goes back it is sleep when you get up all those wrinkles all those impressions all those likes and dislikes all those wrong notions all that uh, individuality it was kept intact and when again the chitta is coming out of the deep sleep again everything is the same but here bhagwan says yoga sevaya niruddham chittam but we are talking about which chitta yoga sevaya niruddham that chitta through the process of yoga the complete objectivity is ironed out see there can't be any better example to tell what is the meaning of the chitta and how it is different from the consciousness a cloth which is not well ironed so you wash it squeeze it and put it for drying and you forget to spread it there is so much of heat that even a human being will be dried out so that cloth twisted gets dried and then you want to go and put it on and then you say my god this lungi is so horrible what horrible it is just washed are baba wash but can you put on this kind of lungi but there is nothing wrong in that it is so clean it's right it is clean and there is nothing wrong other than the lungi there is nothing there no no there are so many wrinkles now those wrinkles are they something other than the lungi they are the lungi only so to remove that dirt the wrinkles what we do we take the hot iron box and move around all the wrinkles disappear where do they go they go nowhere because they were not they were only appearances in the same manner mind 
with the wrinkles of objectivity, desires, expectation, is a source of dirty appearance. In the same mind, he is given the treatment of meditation. What is the treatment of meditation? Taking the hot iron box and moving on the cloth of mind. And what is that hot iron box? Is the heat of meditation. Atma jnana gnidanena tasmai sri gurave namaha anek janma samprapta karma indhana vidahine where from all the wrinkles have come on the cloth anek janma samprapta we have never taken care of our mind all the time objective all the time extrovert and remaining objective and extrovert with the good intentions is not spiritual life Please understand this. Hundred percent withdraw, withdrawal. How yoga sevaya? Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya. So when we move the iron box on the cloth, and then you look at the cloth, how beautiful it looks. In the same manner, mind. Free from the wrinkles of thoughts, desires, anger, frustration, he is the beautiful consciousness. This is called as uparam. Uparamate means now the mind is no more reveling in the outer world. It is discovering the bliss of being. And this bliss of being, rejecting the whole world, we every day do in deep sleep. And yet it doesn't click to us. That what happens in the deep sleep is only this. We give up every objectivity. The absence of objectivity even takes away the subject that you are. This is the subject object less awareness. Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya yoga anushthane na. So sarvataha nivarita pracharam. Nivarita pracharam, now it is no more becoming extrovert, it is no more running outside. And this is done by the yoga abhyas. Yatra cha eva yaspinta kale atmana samadhi parishuddhe na antakkarane na atmana Atma Param Jyoti Swarupam Pashchan Upalabhamana Sve Eva Atmani Tushati Tushtim Bhajate Now this mind which is now no more mind because it has become so purified that the objectivity is almost gone. Now by such a subjective mind this is in Yoga Shastra there are different terms. First is Shuddha Manaha Pure Mind. Then it is called as the uh, Amanavastha or Namanavastha. Amana means absence of the mind, but not of the consciousness. And that is the meaning of the Namana. Namana means Namaskar, salutations. What is the meaning of Namana? Where the mind disappears. So when we salute to the Guru, do the namaskar. What means? Now the mind is no more there. Therefore, the difference, division between the Guru Shishya disappears. This is exactly what is meant by the surrender. No mana. Mind is not allowed to be. And then he is the unmani avastha. One goes beyond the samana, amana and come to the unmani avastha. This also we have seen in our Sadachar. So, by such a parishuddhena antakkaranena, by such a pure mind, param chaitanya jyoti swarupam atma pashyan upalabhamanaha. Then now what is the experience now? 
the experience is objectless awareness and what is this objectless awareness bhagwan says param chaitanya jyoti swarupam there is nobody required to introduce ha huh, my dear disciple this is called as mr chaitanya no it is swayam jyoti swarupam when bhagwan ramachandri visited shabari mata there was no visiting card there was no person to introduce swayam jyoti swarupam therefore chatra chaivatmanatmanam pashyan discovering this objectless awareness tushyati tushtim bhajate one attains total fulfillment now what is the fulfillment there is no poverty of desires there is no foolishness of otherness there is no worry of yoga kshema there is no fear of death deception and the depression see that is called that as pashyanatmani tushyati therefore the very subtle difference between contentment and depression in depression you are not interested in the outer world and in contentment you are not interested in the outer world depression is the loss of interest in life contentment is fulfillment of life see the difference therefore pashyan atmani tushyati this is not a state of frustrated existence we are not obliging by being happy with the world please understand this let us remove that wrong notion under all conditions i try to be happy so are you obliging the world or what if you are miserable then you are troubling the world if you are cheerful and happy you are not obliging the world is it pratyavaya dosh <laughs> further in the 21st verse sukham atyantikam yat tad buddhi grahyam ati indriyam vetti yatran chaivayam sthitas chalati tatvatah now he has pashyan atmani tushyati he is total content and fulfillment why because in that state now what is getting sukham atyantikam the ultimate in bliss is attained atyantikam atyantikam atyantam eva bhavati iti anta means end ati anta means atyanta atyanta means that bliss which does not exhaust undying undecaying happiness all other happinesses that we get the beginning time and the end in time sukham atyantikam yattat then anantam ityartaha yattat buddhi grahyam buddhya eva indriya nirapekshaya gruyate iti buddhi grahyam now this is not the bliss of deep sleep this is the conscious bliss otherwise this will be mistaken that is a deep sleep no see this is one thing if you become more and more aware in your spiritual practice one day you will get the click of it as we have very clear understanding about the deep sleep the dream and the waking so also there is something called as nirvikalpa samadhi and all of us every day go through that nirvikalpa samadhi 100 times alas we don't know this is called as nirvikalpa samadhi this is what is mentioned here sukham atyantikam yattat buddhi grahyam it is the bliss of awareness buddhi grahyam 
and indriya nirapekshaya gruyate and this happiness is atindriyam atindriyam it is not gained through the senses so indriya gochana atitam all vishaya janitam ityartah it is not the result of bringing your senses in contact with the sense object now third vetti tat idrusham sukham anubhavati yatra yasmin kale nache eva ayam vidwan atma swarupe sthitah tasmad na eva chalati tatvatah tatva swarupad na pravachyate ityartah he who is thus established and abides in this kind of sukham he thereafter never falls back tatvatah na chalati he doesn't fall back from this experience of absolute bliss this is the meaning now see in the 18th chapter when we will study we will come across there are three types of happinesses or the sukham and those three types of sukham are uh, based on the three gunas one is the satvika sukha the second is the rajasika sukham and the third is tamasik sukham so here atyantikam sukham is neither rajasik nor tamasik nor satvik because these three gunas keep on changing coming and going and therefore it is atyantikam what is the tamasik sukham तामसी सुखम इज यदग्रे चानुबंधे च सुखम मोहनम आत्मन निद्राल से प्रमादोत्थम तत्तामस मुदारतम द हैप्पीनेस दैट वी गेट आउट ऑफ निद्रा आलस्य प्रमाद लेजीनेस स्लीपीनेस एंड अवॉइडिंग द ड्यूटी एंड फील वेरी हैप्पी नो यू नो टुडे आई वेंट एन होल्ड डे आई सेट देयर and my boss was thinking that i'm working and actually i have finished james had the cheese you know the book was there and i was sitting like this thing and boss was looking at me he thought my god this babu is very very sincere but he does no so that happiness of deceiving others pramad it is tamasik first then the second one is विषयेन्द्रिय संयोग अग्रे मृदोपम परिणा विषम तत्सुखम राजसंस्मृत द राजसी सुखम इज द जॉय गेन्ड थ्रू इंडलज थ्रू द सेंस ऑर्गन विषय इंद्रिय संयोग एंड वेन युअर सेंस फैकल्टीज बिकम ब्लंट एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट्स आर देयर देन यू सफर मोर you want to eat the sweets but now i can't eat you want to eat nice karara um what do you call tandoori you know but you know now there are no teeth you know and even if i bite water it hurts so i want to eat but i can't so vishay indriya sanyoga the happiness gained through the contact of the senses with the sense organ objects is also temporary therefore this sukham is atindriyam and third satvik sukham yat tad agre visham eva parinaame mrutupavam tat sukham satvikam proktam atma buddhi prasadayam and how this satvik sukha is abhyasatramate yatra dukhantam jani gachati be very attentive when we are enjoying meditation and again and again you want to sit for meditation that sukham happiness born out of the repetition of any practice is satvik sukha it is not the sukha of the absolute reality such people become miserable because they cannot complete their niyam their vows i had a friend and uh, once we were together i was having my lectures 
So I uh, told uh, those people, I said, you know, look here, he is very good in Ramayan and he sings also very well and I don't have any music nor I know Ramayan. So when we are going for the picnic, if you want, he will uh, have, you know, some such stuff. And uh, he didn't know all this. Because they were asking, who is this uh, person with you? I say, so and so. I think there shouldn't be any problem. So they have organized everything. When we went in the morning by bus, a very beautiful place, a big lake, and in the center there is a big mahal, like you know, Udaipur type. And uh, there we went. And uh, through the boat and everything. And then the organizer said, now we have got so and so with us, Swamiji's friend. And Swamiji told he's very excellent in explaining Ramayan. So let us have Ramayan Katha here. Now this fellow was totally stunned. Because when we started early morning, he has not taken bath. Without bath, how can I do this? I said, Mantra Snanam. You know, do the Mantra Snanam. Oh no, Shwai, oh no, Shwai, oh no, Shwai. Three times you do and you have taken bath. No, 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 I cannot do I have gone to bathroom also. And I have not washed my feet also. And I have not changed my clothes after I came from my bath or from my toilet. Because every time I go to the toilet, I have different sets of clothes. And when I come out, I don't use the same clothes again. And here in the bus and all that, and I said, doesn't matter, you see, continue, doesn't matter. He said, what to do, what to do. And see, I don't, we don't have Ramayan here. Suddenly one pharaoh said, no, no, Ramayan, we have brought 50 copies. <laughs> now he was so disturbed. Why? Anything you do as a regular practice, and if your practice is hampered because of something, the same practice which gave you happiness starts giving you misery in life. See? Those people, I don't know whether you have seen or not, there are some elderly people. They want the children to come and jump on their calf muscles. They want somebody to come and stand on their back. Do you know why? Because earlier they must have been doing a lot of pahalwani and the body demands that kind of, you know, exercise. Now in the old days they can do active exercise. So massage is nothing but a passive exercise. Instead of you running and expansion and contraction of the muscle, you lie down and the massager comes and by force, he makes them expand and contact, expand and contact and thereafter, ha, ah, the same amount of tiredness which you get after running for 5 kilometers. Now when you can no more do the physical exercise, then these old people, they will say, ha, ah, today whose turn? I don't know whether you have gone through that or not. We had gone through that. So we used to run away from Dadaji or Babra again. Now he'll call and then you have to stand there. And he'll say, ah, come on, jump now. Little more, little more. What is our weight? Little bit. And he wants a huge elephant. This is called like, the happiness born out of Abhyas. If you are doing Japa, every day you have a rule that I must complete Ten malas. Oh no more go the also there. Uh Sukhana Sharanama, Sukhana Sharanama, Sukhana Sharanama, Sukhana Sharanama, Sukhana Sharanama, Sukhana. And suppose one day your mala breaks. And you tell somebody, can you get this mala done and all that? Okay, I'll get it done. So you give. And people have got better things to do. Who's cared about your mala and all that? And those people come back and Beta, did you get my mala? Oh, I gave it to him, you know, and he said uh, he will give. Mm. That evening onward, that Dadi Ma is totally absent. Why? Mala is not there. See? This Abhyasa Janya Sukham, happiness gained because of the practice, is the Sattvic happiness. Here Bhagavan is telling, Sukham Atyantikam Yattat. Whether you are able to practice your things regularly or not, whether you are getting the worldly objects to indulge or not, 
whether you are able to go to sleep, get to sleep or not. All these prakritik ananda, all the happiness pertaining to matter does not matter. Because now one is established in the absolute consciousness. So, sukham atyantikam yattat buddhi grahyam matindriyam and veti yatrana chaivayam he who knows this now see this happiness is to be known it's a question of only understanding see? the happiness through the indulgence through the sense organs cannot be known unless you indulge like you know many times this I have gone through a lot in my life People have their own notions about tasty food. The other day, I went to one Gujarati house for the first time. That lady met me on the, what do you call that, um, whirly sea face. I was walking there after my evening lecture. For 10 minutes, I go for fresh air. Bombay, you don't get fresh air. I was walking there and one lady came. Running, running, running. Swamiji, Swamiji, I can't imagine that you are here and I am seeing you every day. I watch you and all that was over. Then my house is very near. Please come, please come to my house. And she pulled. Next uh, road, her house was there. So, when we went there and thereafter, she said, I'll give you something to eat you will like the most. I said, anyway, give quickly, I had to go for dinner somewhere. And of all the things, what she could bring? Four types of dhoklas. And when she brought four types of dhoklas, the Sham and Rupal were with me. And they said, Swami Ji! Ah, 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 ah. Now that lady who was giving me with such a great love and joy that I am giving Brahmanandam Paramasukhadam to this Swami because I like it and that alone I can give to others. See? But this bliss is Vetti. Once you recognize this, it is not gained from outside, it is expressed from within. Vetti Yatra na Chaivayam Sthitas Chalajitatvataha. So I am Yogi, this Sita, the one who is firmly abiding in this bliss within, na tattvataha chalati, thereafter he never falls. Now see, you must have seen, our liking for the worldly objects goes on changing. Our number of hours sleeping and enjoying goes on diminishing as the age increases. And our happiness gained through the practice also goes away after some time. See, those people at one period of their time who were doing a lot of puja. I remember I used to spend two, three hours in puja every day. Spending all the mantras and everything, taking every god and giving the purusha sukta and everything, two, three hours. And getting lost and enjoying that. Slowly, slowly, that dropped. So during those days, if I could not do my puja one day, it was such a disturbance for the whole day. Because any happiness gained through from outside is borrowed happiness. And here, Vetti Yatra Vachayavayam Sthitas Charati Tattvataha He who has discovered the bliss of his own self Thereafter, no more returning back to this market of duality. Once you have discovered the bliss within, it is something like a person who gets very good and tasty food, why will he think of going for taking food in the hotels? Why we go to take food in hotel for a tasty food? Because at home the food is so horrible. In the same manner, he who has not discovered the bliss within, he alone will go in the violence of the worldly enjoyments. 
एंड सफर देयर फोर योगाभ्यास इज नॉट ओनली कंट्रोलिंग ऑल द फैकल्टीज एंड कमिंग टू ए पॉइंट चित्त वृत्ति निरोधा नो व्यक्ति यत्र रेकग्नाइज युअर कॉन्शियस बीइंग द रिमेनिंग थिंग विल टेक इन योर नेक्स्ट क्लास ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओम श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओम